right, we're gonna talk about the Radeon RX 6000 series GPUs today because AMD just released the first ever images of these new cards based on the new RDNA 2 architecture, codenamed Big Navi. Big Navi? Navi? Tomato, tomato, whatever. Which is the same architecture that's being used in the new Xbox consoles as well as the PS5. But this is obviously untapped potential of RDNA 2 because you're not trying to cram all the cooling elements and everything else in, inside of a little box like you are with a console. So unleashed power. And we're gonna take a look at the card today. Technically, it's not the card, it's 3D rendered images that they've released on their social media channels, as well as in Fortnite. You can apparently go into the game and get a 360 degree look at the card. It's a marketing strategy that has been met with a lot of polarization, and we'll talk more about that later. Uh, but for now, let's just take a look at the card. Um, this is uh, an article from Tom's Hardware where they've linked the Radeon tweet about it. So take a first look at the design of the new Radeon RX 6000 series. Series. Our upcoming AMD RDNA 2 graphics card, graphic card will feature a brand new cooler design and you can study every angle yourself on Fortnite Creative Island. Okay, good to know. Let's take a closer look at this tweet because I did see a reply from Jay that I thought was funny. This is the kind of marketing Gamers Nexus was talking about. Check it out in Fortnite. I guess getting kids to beg their parents for one is a marketing technique. Maybe sponsor Ryan's Toys Review? <laughs> Typical snarky Jay, gotta love him. And then, uh, you know, of course, people are coming to AMD's defense. Jay, Frank explained clearly the bloody bloody blah. It's an accessibility thing because it's free to play. And then Steve Gamers Nexus said, you could just put the 3D model in a viewer in a web browser. Wouldn't even need the game installed. Just, can you believe the common sense of this man? Appalling. No, but Jay and Steve have a really good point here. And like I said, we'll discuss that more later, but I just thought that was funny to point out. So let's take a look at this card, shall we? Yeah, there it is. Look at that bad boy. Okay. Okay, first let's quickly talk about aesthetics because it's just the most visually uh, obvious thing here, but it's red, black, and silver. I think this is silver. And looking from the uh, looking at the Fortnite footage online and stuff, it looks like it's silver. So we've got a, a tri-color scheme here, which I think is gonna look really great in system that have a black, silver, and red color theme. For the vast majority of other builds that are kind of just grayscale, very neutral, this might not fit quite as nicely or tie in aesthetically as the RTX 3080 FE from NVIDIA. Um, but yeah, I think overall in the looks department, the NVIDIA card tickles my fancy. Obviously looks are always subjective, but I do think that the, the neutral color scheme of the 3000 series cards is, is kind of the way to go. It's sort of the trend that we've been leaning towards, that we've been going towards for so long now. So I'd like to see AMD eventually stray away from like the red trim, the red backlighting. NVIDIA finally did it. They finally moved away from green LEDs on their cards to white LEDs, which again, color neutrality. It's such an important thing for so many people that I just don't know why you would alienate that section of the market um, just, just to have your, your brand color on here. Anyway, we've got a triple fan design. We did see a triple fan cooler on the Radeon 7, and it looks like AMD is sort of taking a page out of NVIDIA's book here with their RTX 2000 series GPUs. Their Founders Edition cards for the Turing generation um, also had, you know, a non-blower style design. And I mean, to be honest, no one really likes blower cards. Maybe except for OEMs and system integrators because they're always trying to fit, you know, a GPU that exhausts all the air, all the heat out the back of the case so that it doesn't mess with any other, you know, parts or components that they have in their build because they have to, they have to make sure that these GPUs work in a wide variety of systems. And so the, uh, the blower style designs have always been the safest for that. But this is definitely more catered to the enthusiast crowd. On top of that, it's gonna probably run cooler and quieter, hopefully by a significant margin, than if they had just fit another blower style cooler on this GPU. We'll have to wait and see how testing goes, of course, before we can validate any of this. But so far, I think it looks pretty promising. And, it, and thank God there's no like weird kind of faux dent in it, or it just kind of looks like someone just punched the GPU in one spot. Thank the Lord. What else can we infer from this picture though? I mean, to be honest, we, we've seen this cooler a million times, not this exact cooler obviously, but this style of cooler has been used with most cards that board partners put out. All the aftermarket GPUs that we see usually have two or three fans, uh, non-blower style design with a semi-open shroud. So there's nothing really new or innovative here, but that also means there's no new concerns with how it cools and how it affects other components in a system. Whereas with NVIDIA's RTX 3000 series FE cards, it's got its new flow-through design, which actually ejects heat uh, both out the back of the case, but also directly up 
right next to the CPU area and VRM of the motherboard. So there's a lot of concern that those cards are gonna impact CPU thermals negatively, particularly for users who have air coolers like the, the heatsink tower style coolers. That's just gonna be sucking up all that heat through whatever fan it's got on there, pushing it through the fin array and heating up your CPU. Again, we'll have to wait for, for actual tests to come out. Uh, the other thing we can see here is dual eight pin power connectors, just straight standard eight pin connectors, typical cables that come with your power supply, no crazy 12 pin to dual eight pin adapter, like with the 3080 FE that just looks God awful and really ruins the overall look of the otherwise beautiful card. So that's nice. I never really, you know, we kind of always took uh, eight pin connectors for granted, I think up until the Ampere launch and now, uh, and now I really appreciate them. It also means that this card could potentially draw up to 375 watts from the wall. That's 150 watts per eight pin connector plus 75 watts from the PCIe slot directly. I'm hoping it doesn't draw that much. I'm hoping it doesn't draw close to that much. If the size of the cooler is any indication, it's gonna be a lot to handle, I think, just thermally. Cause I really don't think AMD would put three fans and this beefy heatsink on the GPU unless they felt like they needed to. So uh, I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Um, but it is a big boy. It is a big card. It doesn't look like it's more than maybe two, two to 2.2 slot. It looks fairly thin, but it's a long boy. It's not a thick boy. Boy, it's a long boy. You can just tell from the fans. I don't know how large these fans are, but the fact that there's three of them, I'm guessing this is a fairly lengthy card. That also leads me to wonder if AMD is using a reference PCB on this or if it's a custom one, kind of like how Nvidia has put a custom PCB on their own in-house design for the Founders Edition for RTX 3000. That's still up in the air as well. This doesn't look like it's got any funky weird stuff going on, like with the flow through design on Nvidia's side. So it could very well be a, a reference PCB. I think if it is a reference PCB, that's kind of a good thing, especially if you're planning to water cool these cards or maybe slap a block on in the future. Cause at least to my knowledge, there haven't been any GPU blocks announced for the custom PCB that Nvidia is using on their 3000 series FE cards. But we already have uh, EK who's announced a water block, a full coverage water block for a reference PCB for RTX 3080. So obviously it's a lot easier for, you know, water cool manufacturers, water cool companies to make water blocks for reference PCBs because those are the PCBs that get sent out. Uh, from NVIDIA or from a GPU maker to board partners, custom water cooling companies. It still remains to be seen whether or not we're gonna see GPU blocks made for the custom PCB that NVIDIA has. But if this is a reference PCB on this RX 6000 series card, then it's probably gonna be a lot easier to water cool that thing than if they were using a completely custom design. AMD also gave no hints as to what GPU this is, what actual model it is. It does look high end. It's got triple fans, dual eight pins. This could very well be a flagship card. So maybe it's an RX 6900, maybe some of their lower tier cards will have this same cooler on them. I don't know exactly, but it definitely looks high end. And also I think they're sort of, uh, I don't know, they're channeling their inner Nvidia or just getting a lot of inspiration from the RTX 2000 series FEs. Am I wrong? Am I seeing this wrong? Just like the contours, like the contours and the lines of, of this part of the shroud and the sort of wraparound unibody right here looks very RTX 2080 Ti or 2000 series Founders Edition to me. Not necessarily a bad thing, it's not, quite surprising that uh, AMD would find some inspiration from their very successful competitor. You guys let me know what you think though. Does this look anything like those cards? I think it does a little bit. Also, we can't really see the rest of the GPU from this one image, but we can in Fortnite, which brings us to the Fortnite discussion. This is a video posted by Tom's Hardware to give you an idea of what AMD has done with this marketing strategy of putting the GPU a 3D a uh, rendered artistic model inside of the game where your character can fly around it and see it in full 360 degrees. I think it's fun if you're a Fortnite player. It's like, oh, something cool to do today. That's slightly different than my usual gameplay experience. But for everyone else, it just seems really impractical for us to download a game, even if it's free to play. You still have to download a game, which means you have to download the Epic installer if you don't have that downloaded already, just to look at some images of a GPU. When the vast majority of people are probably just gonna do what I'm doing and look at somebody else's captured gameplay online. I think that's one of the main reasons why people are hating on this teaser so much is because it's just not super accessible. But you could argue that uh, bad press is good press. There's that whole philosophy. At least people are talking about it. Whether you like it or hate it, uh, referring to the campaign, the marketing strategy here, we're all talking about it. I know I've seen other YouTubers on Twitter and on YouTube and other press sites just talking about this, this marketing stunt that AMD's pulled. So at the end of the day, they are getting some more eyeballs on this launch, but my problem with it is that people are talking more about AMD's marketing strategy than they are the actual card. This, this teaser doesn't really spark excitement 
for the GPU, it just sparks controversy over the marketing technique. So I think there's a bit of a missed opportunity in that regard because right now, AMD really needs to generate a lot of excitement. Their cards are launching well after the first uh, the first couple GPUs from NVIDIA. NVIDIA is already gonna have two GPUs out in the wild before these cards even launch. If AMD is really trying to convince people to wait on purchasing these cards until third-party review benchmarks are out on their cards, they should really be focused on trying to hype people up for this launch. And of course, it's still more than a month away. We have no idea what, what other plans AMD has to market this card, um, but we'll have to wait and see. So this Fortnite thing isn't really my cup of tea. Feels like a half-baked plan. I think it would have been a lot cooler if they had more games than just Fortnite with this 3D rendered image that people could go in and look at. If they had it in Warzone and Overwatch and CSGO and all these other titles, I think it would have brought the community more together as opposed to making it more divisive. Like Fortnite players get it, everyone else can screw off. They could have flushed it out a bit better in my opinion, but um, that's not really important uh, to the to the rest of the video because we're, we're, we care about the card, not so much AMD's marketing team. So let's take a look at the back plate. Here it is, silver and black. Silver and black, I was hoping for a completely black back plate. Ooh, that's a tongue twister. That way, if you didn't like the silver, you at least wouldn't have to look at it on this side of the GPU when it's mounted horizontally in most cases, but it looks like you're stuck with the silver. You're gonna have a big splotch of silver in your build, regardless of how you orient this thing. And then the other thing, last thing we'll talk about here, IO, IO, okay. And you can see that we've got one HDMI port, presumably 2.1, two display ports, presumably 1.4A, and then a USB type C port. That's interesting. It's not virtual link because that's a dead technology now, it's slowly being phased out. Is it Thunderbolt supported? We don't know. Upon closer inspection, there doesn't appear to be any sort of lightning bolt symbol next to it. It's possible that they just didn't add it and it is Thunderbolt supported, or it's possible that it's not Thunderbolt supported and it's just a standard USB type C port. If that's the case, then you're talking 10 gigabits per second, most likely as opposed to 40, if you were using Thunderbolt three or four. The other question there is, does it support video? At the very least, I hope it supports video. If it's just a regular USB connection, that's kind of lame because that would mean you could only connect up to three displays to this GPU natively, which is one short of NVIDIA's RTX 3080 Founders Edition and all the other 30, uh, 30 series cards that we're seeing. So I don't know, we'll, we'll have to wait and see about that as well. Nothing else is really valuable here. Look, it's a heat sink, just like on every other cooler in existence. Uh, there's some screws on the side, so you can take it apart like a normal GPU. There's not much else information I can pull from here, but uh, this is all to say, it's an interesting looking card. You guys let me know what you think. I don't think it looks bad. I think it looks good overall. It's probably one of their best looking GPUs that they've ever made, but uh, obviously I do have my, my personal grievances. But you guys let me know what you think. Price and performance is still up in the air. AMD may roll out some nuggets of information between now and October 28th when they officially unveil these cards, but until they do, uh, there's just uh, a lot of unknowns that still need to be answered. Um, I will say this though, wait on buying a GPU. Don't buy a GPU until we have the third-party benchmarks for the NVIDIA RTX 3000 series cards and for these AMD RX uh, 6000 series GPUs out, readily available, where we can just take a full look and make an informed purchasing decision. I don't want any more people in this community to, to fall victim to the same mistake that the recent RTX 2080 Ti buyers did once they purchased those GPUs just ahead of the Ampere announcement. That's just my two cents. If you're already convinced that you're gonna go NVIDIA and you don't want anything to do with AMD, then by all means, just, just go for, uh, just go ahead and buy it right out of the gate. But for everyone else, because these two launchers are so close together, it just makes so much sense to wait and see what both parties are offering. Uh, side note, Ryzen, Three, no, Ryzen 4000 series is coming out in October, October 8th, I think. That's on the Zen 3 architecture. So that's a whole other reason, a whole other thing to talk about. We'll talk about that in a future video, but a reason to hold off on buying CPUs as well. Don't buy a CPU or a GPU. Just hide your kids, hide your wallet, please. But I think that's all I got for now, guys. So thank you so much for watching this video. Toss a like before you head out and get subscribed for more tech content on the way. I will see you guys in the next video.